Uh, David in Addison, Illinois, listening on WCPT. Hey, David, uh, you disagree that, hey. and you want to say the war on women or against women is a dangerous narrative? Um, yeah. Uh, well, let me let me give you a little bit of context. I myself okay. am. You can call me pro-choice. I'm largely apathetic to the issue of abortion, right. but I do know a lot of people who are who are uh, pro-life, and not a single one of them in any way say anything that I've ever heard anyone on the left say about abortion. What most people that I know who are religious conservatives, their their concern with abortion is it's a, it's it's an issue of of a life. And if you keep trying to, to talk about it as if they're trying to control or destroy women or, or all this, honestly, it's, it's nonsense. It, the way that you need to approach this and the entire issue of sex isn't, isn't to claim that there's a war going on or that someone's trying to control someone or destroy someone. It's, you, you have to understand where they're coming from and what they're concerned about, which is the, what they see as murder of a life. I understand that. I understand that, and I've never asserted anything uh, other than that. But in addition to that, you have a lot of men inside the Republican Party who are, you know, openly dismissive of women's concerns, openly dismissive of women's health concerns. The fact of the matter is, the majority of women in uh, in in America who are on birth control right now are not on birth control for birth control. They're on birth control because it regulates their periods and it makes it makes it makes their bodies work better. Uh, the, 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 this is a health issue. And then you get the Republican Party coming along going, oh, no, no, this is because these women have libidos. It's because Sandra Fluke is a slut, you know, to quote Rush Limbaugh. And, and, and therefore, the federal, we taxpayers shouldn't be, or anybody who has insurance shouldn't be paying for their birth control pills, God forbid. And that misogynistic message gets rolled up along with the genuine anti and i have a, a, a couple a couple of very good friends who are pro life democrats and and in fact i have a, a good friend who is is very high up in the organization of democrats for life i mean there's actually a pro life group of democrats right anti abortion democrats and and they are not at all misogynistic they i mean in fact this friend that i'm referring to is a woman and 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 so I you know I get that that there are people of goodwill and good heart who simply think that you know saying that okay the 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 point at which a uh, a fertilized egg becomes a human being becomes a human life is not at the point of viability as the Supreme Court decided in seventy three or it's not at the point of implantation in the uterus as as most most medical science acknowledges or suggests. Uh, but rather it's at the point of fertilization in the fallopian tubes, or it's at the point of intent when people have sex, which is the position of the Catholic Church, that, that life actually even precedes fertilization. And, and you know, I get that. that you know, there, there, there are people who, who want to have, and, and, and I think that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was right. You know, I've, I talked about this last Friday. This is what I've been saying all along. The Supreme Court never should have decided Roe v. Wade. This is outside their, you know, it's, it's, it's not part of their job. It's not their job description. It's not in the, in, the, in, the, in the Constitution that the Supreme Court gets to write law and policy. In fact, if anything, it's the opposite. Article 3, Section 2 says the Supreme Court shall operate under regulations established by Congress. Congress makes the law. So when the Supreme Court said, there are three trimesters, and we're going to set up different standards for each one of these three trimesters, they were breaking the law. And, and, but more importantly, as Ruth Bader Ginsburg pointed out, there was a growing women's rights movement that was growing in concert with the abortion rights movement in 1973, because the birth control pill had only been on the market for 11 years. The Catholic Church was going whole, full tilt boogie against it. And these two movements were producing a really healthy national conversation about, you know, yes, we all agree there needs to be some regulation on abortion. Nobody would want a normally developing child to be aborted in the, in the, in the ninth month. That's insane. That is murder eighth month probably murder seventh month, yeah, what you know like i said the supreme court said viability if it could be viable outside outside the womb then it's a human being and it's fully protected and the point of viability has diminished over time as medical science has gotten better and better and better at de dealing with premature babies that's a discussion that america needs to have that's a conversation that should be had in a legislature in a legislative context 
and it is being had in some places on a state-by-state basis. That's a conversation we need to have. But the Supreme Court in 1973 with Roe v. Wade aborted that discussion and thus, you know, empowered the, 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 both the people with genuine personal and religious concerns that you're describing and the misogynists among us, the Todd Aikens, the legitimate rape people, the, oh, you know, when women get raped, their bodies, you know, just well, automatically reject them. incredible minority. I know that's it is. An incredible I'm, minority. I'm, and and the, the, the problem is that when they say ridiculous things like this, and there's tons of loudmouths uh, on the right who, who do say really stupid things from time to time, and the problem is that the left-leaning media and the, the Democrats grab it and run with it, and and use it as a way to discredit the. Well, why not? If somebody on the if somebody on the left says something stupid, you think the right wingers are? You know, you think Limbaugh's not going to feature it on his show? Limbaugh's Limbaugh's an idiot. But the point is, if you if you give them credence by running with it instead of having these legitimate discussions, which I have never, once in my entire life, had a heard a major democratic politician or media figure suggest that we have these discussions that it's always been a war on women well i have been calling for these conversations for for eight years on this program i've been absolutely consistent on this issue then you haven't been saying it loudly enough you just well or you haven't listened to my show often enough because this doesn't come up every single day it comes up maybe every other week but but you know i don't disagree with you at all that there are good people of goodwill who are operating out of the very best of intent who want to have reasonable regulations on abortion. And in their mind, reasonable in some cases means don't even take a pill that prevents implantation, which is basically what birth, how birth control pills work, I believe. Um, don't even do that because that's, you know, against God's will. I get it. And, and you know, and I respect them. But I think that as a, as a, as a democracy, as a democratic republic, we really should be having these discussions and be passing laws based on the will of the majority of the people. This is, the, you know, that, that, that's the essence of our democracy. And, th- and But what you will find is that there are some of those folks who are operating out of good intent who will say, no, that's the argument that was used to justify slavery. Because they're seeing this, they are, you know, uh, Carl Jung, the psychologist, the famous psychologist, um, said that there are judges and perceivers. There's about 20% of us who are, he called judges. He said, they see only black and white. They see no shades of gray. And then the other 80% of us are called what he called perceivers. And we see the world in shades of gray. And you get these judges who believe that it is absolutely, you know, that, that the moment that that egg is fertilized in the fallopian tubes, if you take a hormonal contraceptive that prevents it from implanting itself in the uterus so it just gets passed out as a normal menstrual period, which is what happens when women are on birth control pills, that that is murder. When you get one of these people who believes that that is murder, and they take the position that you know murder is a, is a moral yes-no, just like slavery is a moral yes-no. And, and I would say, you know, slavery based on race, yeah, that, prob- that is a moral yes-no. Slavery based on economics, I think we're backing into that right now, right here in the United States. But, but in any case, they, they take these positions, these absolutely absolutist positions, and, and end up blowing up, you know, abortion clinics and things. And, and, and it's like, that's not doing that side of the argument any good. Am I, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting here. But um, <laughs> are, are, uh, David, are we, uh, you, when you first called and you sounded quite upset about this all. Are we saying the same thing? I mean, we are, but the, the, what, what needs to happen is, honestly, the, the larger democratic establishment as a whole needs to drop this war on women narrative and, and engage in real discussion. I, because, uh, as, you know, if, as, if it was it, only about when life begins and how we're going to legislate abortion, I would not disagree with you. But you have the Republican Party, for example, the... Uh, uh, the uh, Bill Clinton signed the Family and Medical Leave Act, right, which arguably mostly benefits women. The Republicans tried to filibuster it. The Republicans would not even consider uh, the uh, Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, which which uh, prevents uh, employers from from using pregnancy or the possibility of pregnancy to discriminate against women by by giving them lower wage rates or, you know, different kinds of contracts from other workers. The Republicans, no. 
uh, these, these forced ultrasound bills. This is, this is nothing but humiliation and punishment. This is a war on women. This is not about when life begins. Your turn. Look, the, the, I, I'll give you the, the ultrasound thing I, I think is absolutely ridiculous. It's, state, and, and it's state-sanctioned rape. You, 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 I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far. But the problem shoving is an ultrasound wa- of- wand into a woman into a woman's uh, vagina when, uh, by force of law is not san- state sanctioned rape. It, she has to consent. I mean, she has to consent to a procedure, doesn't she? But no, I, I don't want to. Do this that. is you know in Virginia, technology. you know, uh, Cuccinelli and 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 McDonald they passed a law that said no. The, you if you want to get an abortion, you got to get raped first. It's, look, it's I think there's something a good way to say it, but if if you approach it, someone that's on the right and you, you say, know that's you and I might not view it that way because we're men, but what if anytime you wanted to buy Viagra, you had to have a rectal exam first? And they had to test your your check out your prostate. Wouldn't you start thinking twice? About, I mean, you know, it's like whoa. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. So thus begins the war on men, right? I can see it now. The new legislation. Forced transrectal ultrasounds before you get Viagra. Take that, Rush Limbaugh.